Welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend. And today, a cautionary tale, beware the graduals. Quite a few years ago, I had to go through retesting to just find out how far my neurological condition had progressed. And so I went through a six week assessment overseen by a team of physiotherapists, occupational therapists, and speech pathologists. When the test began, I was pretty sure of what the results were going to be, but my attitude towards the end of these evaluations became rather flippant and nonchalant. Oh, hum, I've been through all this before. I know myself better than anyone else knows me, so what could they possibly tell me about myself that I don't already know? Yes, I was rather smug as I sat on the neurologist's examining table. As this was a teaching hospital, the neurologist requested that two of his interns join us in the examination. I cheerfully agreed and answered a few questions posed by his students as I removed my boots and socks in anticipation of the tests I knew that were about to happen. The first test always involved a pin being pressed in random spots all the way from my toes up to my knees. From previous experience, I knew he would try to trick me by hovering the pin close to my skin while asking if I felt the pin prick. For this test, I only needed to give feedback. Do you feel this? Yes. What about this? No. How about here? No. I watched as the test progressed and replied, yes, I feel that. No, I don't think I feel that. Although I could see faint pink marks left on my skin by the pins pricks, I knew they would quickly fade. My neurologist then asked me to close my eyes as he repeated the test, and I responded the best that I could. With my eyes closed, the test was now a lot harder. It didn't help that one of his interns was rather talkative. When the tests were not conducted, I enjoyed the students' chit-chat, but his sudden interest in my family history began to annoy me. But being the polite Canadian that I am, I tried to answer his questions the best that I could while responding to the doctor's constant murmuring. Do you feel this? What about that? My doctor told me I could open my eyes and when I looked down at my legs, I was dismayed. There were twice as many pink spots as before. And yet I knew the spots from the previous test had disappeared by the time the second test was conducted. I had not felt an increase in the pricks. If anything, I felt less than before. My doctor explained that he asked his intern to distract me on purpose. He wanted me to make sure I was basing my responses solely on the physical sensation and not on the spots on my legs. I knew that I had lacked some feeling in my feet and lower legs, but I had not realized that my neuropathy had progressed so much. My neurologist cautioned me that I must be vigilant in checking my feet for cuts, bruises, and blisters on a daily basis. While I can feel a severely stubbed toe, I lack enough feeling to be aware of small cuts that could lead to infection. Although my neuropathy is not the same as diabetic neuropathy, I can't still get infection if I'm not careful. Ever so gradually, my nerve endings are dying. They are no longer to alert me to the subtle and potential dangerous changes in my feet. I have to admit I was shaken from complacency that day, but I was very grateful for my doctor's keen observation and his wise advice. Watchman Nee wrote about a spiritual neuropathy that takes place in the lives of many Christians, and this quote is a rather long one. Satan has, in fact, a plan against the saints of the Most High, which is to wear them out. What is meant by this phrase, wear out? It has in it the idea of reducing a little this minute, then reducing a little further the next minute. Reduce a little today, reduce a little tomorrow. 
thus the wearing out is almost imperceptible. However, it is reducing. The wearing down is scarcely an activity of which one is conscious, yet the result will be that there will be nothing left. He will take away your prayer life little by little and cause you to trust God less and less and yourself more and more a little at a time. He will make you feel somewhat cleverer than before, step by step. You are misled to rely more on your gift and step by step your heart is enticed away from the Lord. Now, were Satan to strike the children of God with great force at one time, they would know exactly how to resist the enemy because they would immediately recognize his work. He uses this method of gradualism to wear down the people of God. And that's from Let Us Pray by Watchman Nee. I used to fear the conviction of the Holy Spirit as I equated it with God's judgment. I now understand conviction is more of a diagnosis than a judgment, a prognosis and not a punishment. The prognosis of a sinful heart is pretty bleak. A regimented life of self discipline through acts of charity, Bible reading, and study won't stop the relentless numbing of that heart. The cross is the only effective cure. While God's examination of my heart often reveals how insensitive it has become to his promptings, he only reveals my heart condition so I can take advantage of his solution. He doesn't just prescribe aids to help me cope with my situation. He doesn't give me a spiritual cane, for example, so I can limp along through life with an insensitive spirit. No, he gives me a transformed heart, replacing my deadened heart of stone with one of flesh. One of my favorite Bible verses of all time, Ezekiel 36, verse 26. I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove that heart of stone from your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Perhaps today has been a little bit of a wake-up call to you, and you're suddenly aware about how insensitive you have become, and how difficult it has become for you to hear the voice of the Lord. You're not too far gone. Just remember to set up an appointment with our divine spiritual neurologist and allow him to reveal to you the condition of your heart. And even the most far gone heart is never beyond his redemption. Don't be afraid that God is going to say to you, oh, sorry, you came to me a little bit too late because it's never too late this side of heaven.